fellow beaters, it's JP, and I am bringing you part two of my component series here. So I made this component in the center, and if you missed the previous video, part one, I made a bracelet in part one. Uh, I showed you how to make this component. Uh, I showed you how to connect the component to the bracelet, and also how to make the clasp. So if you missed it, then go back. I have a link to it in the description box, so you can go back and watch that video if you want. In part two, I'm showing you how to make the earrings that match uh, the bracelet. And as you guys know, or you've, um, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know this, that I am in partnership with Doreen Beads, and they send me beads, and I do videos using their, be their beads. So in this particular uh, earrings I used and what you're going to need are a total of 16 four millimeter bicones which is what I have here you'll need eight per earring you're going to need um, 11 OC beads so I used um, two colors I used a white and a black so those are right there at the top and you'll also need a 15 O bead so I'm using a silver 15 O bead in addition, you are going to need two 8mm beads. So Doreen Beads send me these faceted beads and they're kind of cool. They're they're flat at the top and the bottom side of it. So I've been using them in this orientation, just like they have here. Um, you can use any 8mm round bead. It doesn't have to be this one, but if you want this one, I will have the link in the description box. In addition, um, you will need some drop. I think these are drop beads or are they pear beads? I'm not quite sure, but they're pear shaped and they match the, um, they're crystal and jet black. They match my, my black bicones and so I really liked them. So I added them in here and these are also from Doreen beads. And the last thing you're going to need are, um, jump rings and ear wires of your choice. Doesn't matter. Now this dangle portion, I show you how to add that in, but it's completely optional. You can leave it out um, or you can use something else. You don't need to have these pear shaped beads. You can add more bicones um, or you can just add a bunch of uh, other 8 6 6-0 beads that you have. Something, you know, depends on what colors and things that you're using, but this is a very, you know, all of this is optional and it's up to you in terms of how you want to design this. I kind of give you the design I make and then you guys can sort of personalize it even further to whatever you like. Anyway, um, so I hope you guys like this and parts three and four are going to be a ring and a necklace to match. So I'll be posting those videos um, later in the month. I have other designs that I also want to do. So here's one that's coming up too is this bracelet. It's uh, a tennis bracelet and very sparkly with lots of bicones. So I think you guys will like this. Um, anyway, that's coming up too. So I've got a bunch of different things coming up and, you know, just to give you more gift ideas, because that's the other thing is that, you know, for the holiday season, how lovely would it be to give someone a set like this? And, you know, this looks pretty expensive. I mean, if you were to sell something like this, it'd be, I mean, this is a lot of bit of work. So, um, I'm basically posting videos to give everyone ideas for gifts. But also remember, if you go back and look through my older videos, I mean, there's a lot of, um, blingy pieces there. And you can make a lot of great looking, um, gift pieces there too. For example... I don't know if you guys remember these earrings, but there's a pair that look like uh, stars or snowflakes. I used um, a Swarovski, I believe this is a 10 millimeter bead, and 10 or 12. Um, it's in the video, so if you go back, if you go into my playlist, you'll have all the, I have them all divided based on the type of jewelry, so there's a play, playlist of earrings a playlist for bracelets, rings, so on. Anyway, but these are a little bit more for the season. It's, you know, sort of wintry, holiday type earrings. So 
if you want to make that. I also um, can also make a pendant with it if you didn't want to make, you know, two of those because it's kind of a big earring. So here's the pendant that I had made. So anyway, just wanted to remind you that, you know, go back and look at some of the older ones because there's some, there's some ones that are pretty good for um, gifts. Okay, let's get started. Oh, one other thing is I'm going back over how to make this component. So if you are already comfortable with the component because you made the bracelet, then you can skip over the next, I'd say, I think 15 minutes of it and go straight into the dangle and the, the loop portion. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoy this. Bye. So to begin our component, what you're going to do is take your faceted bead and go through it and bring the thread so you want to bring it down as close to the end of the thread here but what you're going to do is have about a three to four inch tail and the way I usually do this is I hold the tail with my three fingers and then I hold the bead with my thumb and index finger and this way it helps you sort of stabilize and makes it a little easier to work with. Next you're going to pick up eight seed beads. So I've got five, six, seven, and eight. And you're going to go around the bead and you're going to make a loop just like that. And then we're going to turn it and we're going to make another loop. So we're just going to do the same thing. Pick up eight beads four, five, six, seven, and eight. So it's important that you get 18 beads into your, uh, around these beads. So far we have 16, eight on either side, like this. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go around, you're just going through the beads and it doesn't matter which loop and I went through half of that loop now I'm just going to go through the second half and you don't need to get through all the beads at once just take your time so I'm going to go through two And this is what you're going to get. So the loops are going to be a little bit spread apart and there's going to be a gap. So you want to close off the gap between the two loops and you're going to take a bead. Now I'm going to use a black bead here just so you guys can see what I'm doing a little more easily. But you don't have to do that. You of course can use the same exact color. This is more for video purposes than anything else. And I'm going to come back up to the opposite side. And I'm going to use another black bead here too. So I want to make sure your black your beads are a little uniform in size. Otherwise, this isn't going to fit properly. And I'm going to go back through these beads again. So this is what you're going to get. And you want to give it a tug with both your working thread and your tail thread. And this is what it should look like. Now I'm going to go through these beads one more time and what this does is this will reinforce your loops and they'll be a lot more stable and secure around the bead. Okay, so I've gone around and what I'm going to do is I want to come out of a bead that's right before my black bead here. So I'm going to give these two both a good tug and now I'm going to pick up three more black beads and I'm going to skip this black bead and I'm going to go through the next two white beads. Now the reason I did this is just so you understand that it's important that you end up with a triangle that's above this black bead and this bead and that's how you get this shape so you need this to align properly now if you're using a round bead it probably isn't going to make a difference but because of the flatness of this um, faceted bead at the top 
you kind of need this to come out this way in order for it all to look even. So now I'm going to repeat this again. So I'm going to pick up three. Get my thread out of the way here. I'm going to pick up three of my black beads. So I'm going to skip this bead here. So my thread is exiting this one. So I'm skipping the very next one. And I'm going to go through the next two after that. And get another little triangle. And again, you want to skip this one and come out of the one that's come out of, come out right before the black one. Like so. I'm going to wrap this tail behind me, or behind my finger, that is. Pick up three again. So we skip the black one and we go through the next two white ones. Just like that. So we got four. We need to do a total of six. So we got two more to add. Pick up three, skip this one, go through the next two. Just like so. And the last one, pick up three, you're skipping this one, and you're going through the next two, and then you go up into the black triangles where you first started. You just want to go up through the first two, so you want to end up at the point. So now I'm exiting out of this top bead here. All right, so the next step, and don't worry if these are not sitting flat, that's okay. We're gonna fix that in just a second in our next, in this coming step. So now what you're gonna do is take a 15-0, your bicone, and a 15-0, and you're just gonna go into the next bead in these little picots that we added just like so, and you're gonna give it a little tug. And we're gonna do it again. So we're gonna fill in the gaps all the way around. So I picked up a 15-0, a bicone, and a 15-0. And repeat. So, and you want to be pulling this close together so that the beads are popping up a little bit. So, 15 0 by cone, 15 0. And you want to get this tail out of the way. And I'm actually going to, before we do the next step, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to weave that away. So, 15 0. My cone, 15-0, and through the next one, fifteen zero. by cone, 15 and you want to go through this black bead and then keep going into the 15 and the by cone. You want to give it a tug, and you want these pieces should start to fold upward, get some curvature going upward, like so. So if you look at my completed component here, you can see there's, it curves up, sort of frames the bead. So what you're going to do now is actually reinforce. So we're going to go through all of these beads that we just added, the 15 O's, the bicones, and the black 11 O's. And
Okay, so I've got a few more to go through. And you want to tug as you go. You don't want to tug so hard that you're going to break the thread, but you, you do want to get the shape in place. And, okay, so that's the last time because we're actually going to go through it one more time in the next step as part of the next step when we add beads. So it's good to reinforce once, but you also don't want to overdo it because then you won't be able to get your uh, needle through those 15 O's. So yeah, it looks a little weird. Um, so one side looks a little more bent than the other, but I'm going to fix that in just a second. So before we get to the next step, I'm actually going to take my tail thread, I'm gonna thread that side of it and I'm gonna just weave the thread away and get it out of the way now. You don't need it and once we do this next step, it's gonna be a lot harder to do that. So all I'm going to do is go through these beads here and this is the back side of the component. And you can make a knot if you want, um, it's really not necessary. If you feel more comfortable, you can do a half inch knot here around these beads. I'm just going to go through them for now. Okay, go ahead and I'm gonna cut that so it's gone and out of the way. And now I got to re thread. I should have had a second needle, but I just ordered some new needles and I can't find the packaging. Can you believe that? So I've been, uh, I can, since I bead so much, I go through needles fairly often. Okay. So at this point, the component is almost finished. We just want to stabilize the component because right now, if you're, if you're making this along with me, you'll notice that it's not very stable and these are moving about. So in order to stabilize the component, what you're going to do is pick up five beads. And I'm actually going to pick up two blacks, a white, and then two blacks. And this is mostly, again, for video purposes, and you'll see why, because it's easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. So you're going to go back. You want to be exiting out of a bicone. And then you're going to go back through the bicone again. So you're just you're making a little loop a five bead loop around the bicone. Then continue onward to the next bicone. So I'm just going into the 15-0, 11-0, and then the bicone. And I'm gonna pick up again two blocks, a white and two blocks. And then onward. So you're just making loops around the bicone. And there's my five. I'm just going to go through this bicone again. And then if I can, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, I'm going to try to come out of this next bicone. So I got my five and set myself up here. And then go into the bicone, just the bicone. Like so, and That's what you need to do. And oops, wait, I need to get out of the bicone first before I can add more beads. All 
All right, so this is the last one that we're going to have to add loops to. So there's my five beads. I'm going to go around the bicone, and then I'm going to keep going. And I want to try to exit out of this first bicone where we started making the loops. So this is what your piece will look like. It's like a funky little black and white flower. All right, so now that you're exiting out of this first bicone, you want to go up and exit out of the white bead in the loop, just like this. To so exiting out of that, flip the work to the back, and we're going to flip these up towards the center. So now we're going to connect this all together. So what you're going to do is pick up three black beads and you're just going to go through the white bead in the next loop. And repeat. Two and three. Again. Again, three. Go through the white. Go through the white. Oops. And last time, go through the white, and then you're just going to go through a few more beads. Now give everything a nice tug, and everything should sit. So this is the front, and I'm just giving it a tug, tightening everything up. And what you want to do again is to reinforce this, and I would recommend going through these beads a few more times. Okay, fellow beaters, so once you've finished your component, what you want to do is exit out of a bicone, like I am here. So this is the orientation that I want to my earring to be in. So this bottom, this is going to be the bottom of the earring with the dangle, and this is the top where the ear wire is going to go. So this way, my bead here, or my center bead is right side up, and it's not this way, but you can do it that way if you want. It's, um, you're going to arrange the dangle just a little bit differently if you do it that way. So it's really up to you if that's what you want, but since the orientation of the, um, component in the bracelet is in the same direction. I wanted my earrings to kind of be similar. So that's the way reason I'm doing it that way, but you're not limited to that. Okay. So to make our dangle, um, what you're going to do is pick up a 15, 11, 15, then a bicone, and then another set of 15, 11, 15, then the drop, and then three fifteens. And you're going to bring those all down as close as you can get them. Like so. You're going to skip the three fifteens. You're going to go back up through the drop, then through the 15, 11, 15, and you're going to come out of the bicone. Thread just got caught there on my pliers that are sitting on the side. And then you pick up a 15, 11, 15, and you go through the bicone that's opposite the one you're exiting, basically. And 
And there you go. And there's your dangle. I think it looks nice. I like sort of the the silver and black colors. Now to make the ear wire, you're just going to work your way up to this particular bicone up there. So you're just going to go through your 15s, 11, 15, and then the bicone there. And then the, no the next set here, so we can get to the bicone that we want. And this is why I had my pliers close, because I know that the 15s are going to be a little bit tight. So make sure there's no slack in your thread here. Um, and you can go back. Once we make the loop, you can go back down and reinforce that if you want. So now to do this next part, this is going to be very similar pattern wise. So I'm going to do 15, 11, 15. Then I'm going to do a bicone. And then another 15. And then I'm going to do 6 11s. And I'm going to bring all that down. Just like this. And the next thing I'm going to do is going to be a little bit different than what you guys are used to seeing. I'm actually going to go back through this 11 here. Just like this. And I'm going to create a circle. And don't worry, I know it looks lopsided. Um, I'm going to fix that in just a second. So you get a little circle like this. And what you're going to do is go back through the beads again just to give that a little reinforcement. Just like this. And you're going to come out of that first black bead that's where we started okay now what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill in these gaps so you see how there's gaps here you're gonna fill in each of those gaps with a 15 so since I'm left-handed I'm just gonna flip that this way so I'm exiting this black one and now I'm gonna go into this next one but I've picked up a 15 to go in the gap there And I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to do, I'm going to put up 15 between each of these black beads. My thread keeps getting caught on the edge of the tray there. And again. Okay, one more time. You're going to add one more there. Come out of that black bead. Make sure it pops into place. I think it's twisted. Yep. Okay, still seems like it's twisted, but no, yeah, I guess not. Okay, and so sorry. Um, this last part, you're actually going to go back down this 15 that's on top of the bicone and come out of the bicone. And what this will do is 
make this come out even so it's actually centered and then we add a 15 an 11 0 and a 15 and we go into this bicone here So give everything a good tug and there you go. So now to reinforce this, you can go all the way around and go down and around and come back up. I'm actually going to do the other way to do this to reinforce this is to go through the beads in the back. So you're going around these black beads. So you go up these black beads here. So especially because your 15 O's are probably really, really um, tight in the front. So you might not be able to get your thread through it because we've gone through those beads many times when we're making the component. So I found that going through the beads here in this back area to be a little bit easier. Though these guys are also might be a little snug too, but these are less likely to break. You don't want to break your 15 O's. And then you can come back up the front and you just follow the thread path. So all I'm doing is going up into the bicone and then up this 15 O here. And you just go through these beads again if you can. Now, I've already, because of the way I reinforced this already, um, but you should be able to get through them. I mean, I've it's been about three times, so should have one more go anyway. The only tricky part is actually just getting the angle because all the beads are now a little bit angled because of the way I added in the ba the 15 O's so it might be just a little tricky to get through the beads which is the trouble I'm having plus trying to do this and stay within frame is also a little bit of a challenge um, There we go. So now I know this is going to be okay and I'll be able to get through all this mostly because I've already, I did it with the first, the other earring in the pair. But I do find that my grip on these needles is a little bit slippery and so I need to use a plier. Okay, and I'm down. So I'm going to go back down into the bicone and I want to make sure I'm going to go to the front just so and okay and I want to make sure that I go down these beads here because I came up this side and back through the bicone here okay so that should be done now what you can do is go back up through these beads here in the back and then um, you can tie a half inch knot here. So at this point you can tie off your thread. I'm not, as you can see how tight the beads were, um, there's no point in trying to 
reinforce again. I think I've done a pretty good job of reinforcing. And I'm going to go to this in this direction and tie another knot. So I'm going to tie a total of three knots. And this is my third one. Okay, so there we are. And I can cut my thread. So I'm grab my scissors. And there we are. I'm going to go ahead and put on the jump ring and our ear wire. So there's the jump ring. Open that up, hook that on. So make sure your ear wire is in the right direction. You probably don't do that, but I sometimes don't pay attention and I will put it on backwards. And all right, guys, here is the completed earrings. I hope you like this tutorial and stay tuned for parts uh, three and four are going to be coming up as well as a few other things that I'll be posting throughout the month. Anyway, have a good day, week, month, etc. And I'll see you in the next video.